Hey guys, welcome back to DMAC Customs. In this episode, we're going to show you what went on in here with these little covers and getting rid of all the pits and stuff that we talked about in the previous video. Let's get to it. But the next bit I thought I'd tackle would be maybe this in a guard here. I'm going to cut this piece, cut these out, and I'm going to add a new piece in down here. And then try and figure out what I'm going to do to make a cover for those. So I can either do this on the easy side, because it's relatively, well it is rust free, it's just got a few factory holes and stuff that I need to maybe, maybe weld those up, possibly. I don't know whether I'm going to use them, need them. I don't even know what half of them are for, since I didn't pull this car apart. I don't quite know what some of the stuff is, but you can always re-drill them. Or drill new ones or whatever. <coughs> this side here is the trickier side. And you can see there's a... Where the old factory tray has been sitting, there's um... It's got a bit of tin worm in there, so... I might um... But I, well, not might, I will cut that out. And there's some stuff down here like pitting and crap like that in this black face here, so I might cut that out. That side, that area there, it's not too bad, it's pitted, but I might be able to fill it. But this bit here has already got pinholes and stuff, so we might just, oh yeah, she's pretty thin, might take that out. And then same again, I have to make some kind of box or cover or something for those shock cars. Grind back a weld, sort of like this, a thing like this, and I'm going to end up hammering it up, which is I often do because I'll get impatient and I walk the crap out of everything. Um, I tend to grind back most of the most of the weld before I start hammering it back. I've seen some people just kind of start beating on it while there's lumps and stuff there, and all I've found is that just pushes the weld and stretches the steel, like kind of ends up pushing it out the back. So I try to flush it off, not all the way, but as much as. Um, as my feel needs to be and then I'll start sort of hammering and dollying it just to knock down and knock the high spots back in and out and
pretty happy with that. I don't really want to, again, I don't really want to go grinding away like a mad grindy thing for hours and hours on end because this, this stuff's just so thin. It's just so thin. And then, uh, it just, you just end up with like a tin foil car. You don't really want that. So, I'm going to have to have a bit of filler in here. So, that's fine on the back side. It's not too bad. I'll probably just east prime that. Um, maybe run a bit of seam sealer in behind that. Just probably don't even need to do that. But all this will be um, covered in um, stone guard, under seal type stuff anyway. So it's, that'll um, dress that up. Again, not building a show car. Probably better ways of doing this, but this seems to work for me. So I'm just going to trim this up. And then I'll start working out what I'm going to do with this shop cover box thing. And maybe weld these holes up. Just the ones in there, I don't think I need them. But I think, maybe do, we'll find out when we put the car back together. So with this shop cover that I'm making for the, for the engine bay there, um, or the engine compartment, some folk call it, what I was thinking is like folding these edges up and making a cover that then gets maybe some screwed or uh, maybe some rib nuts or something sort of on there just to create this cover. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to use these to fold up these, these lips. This one, the new piece will be the hardest part because that's quite a bit thicker than the original stuff. But let's give it a shot, eh? Might work. Use a hammer for the next bit for these small ones. I don't know that I'll get. Well, maybe just normal. Normal vice grips might do us. Well, I'll be. didn't think of it, but um, I'll make sure that uh, it's all square, it needs to tuck a little bit more, but and that's not bad, um, yeah, and I'll just lift that up to square, oh, I'm talking a lot of rubbish today, kind of thinking 
trying to talk at the same time. Sometimes it doesn't work. But yeah. Anyway, got to say, stop saying. But yeah. So I might just run the one mil down those. Just should I? Because we're not well that. Let's run. pull them. I might not. I'll check the fit first. Back in a minute. I got a little carried away, well not carried away, got distracted. Welded up the um, random holes in, on these pieces, or in this piece, just to, I was going to do it anyway, so I might as well just do it now. Um, and just squared a little bit of black etch around, just to seal it up for now. Both sides, inside and out, just, just on the where I've been welding and cutting and stuff. And um, so this is the plan here, is to build a kind of a cover it just comes over here it could even do a curb sort of thing just to cover this and keep all the road grime and crap like that out of the engine bay and then but still needs to be removable so I get to the get the bolt out of the shock yeah gotta tackle the other side not today but this is the plan for the other side well not really a plan I just gotta figure out what my plan is maybe next week I'll think about it during the week and get back onto this close to two weeks since I got onto this well, since I started this and uh, I've only just sort of got back onto it had to do some some work on my daily driver um, but I didn't actually get it fixed, so again. Um, but anyway, so I've got to do, I'm going to make up some cardboard sort of templates things to, to um, for these shock tower doodads that I've got to make. Um, I use a special high density cardboard. I can buy it local. Got heaps of it. So let's get to it. Look mum, what I made at school today. It's a box of shock towers. It's getting a bit late in the afternoon now that I sort of didn't get, get onto this until later. But I'm making a little cover that goes over the top of my shock towers that I already made um, some months ago. Um, and they come up quite high and they come up into the engine compartment so um, I need to some, find some way of kind of covering them up, dressing them up, making them look better uh, and uh, also keep all the road grime and stones and crap like that out of the old engine bay. So this is my rough template. So yeah, so I might cut this up again now and See if I can cut some pieces and then try and make what I'm trying to make. I'm trying to get these curves over here with, with my limited sort of tooling and that might be a bit tricky. Either that or just be an exercise in patience, but we'll see. How ugly is that? So it's going to sit up on there. It'll, it'll be screwed and bolted in so it can be taken out to take the shots out and stuff. Might still be having an air intake, but cold air coming through here yet. I kind of like to try and keep that if I can.
getting there. I think that might actually work once I weld all those, or tig all those up so we get a nice pliable thing. Then I can uh, grind and weld it, uh, grind it and file it, and then I can trim it up square. It's a little bit on the piss at the moment. What do you reckon? I reckon I should. If I do a little swagey in there, that might look quite cool, but it might be a bit small for my skill level. Give it a try. Okay, so I've got the one side made. My, my idea for rounding that corner kind of works. It still needs a, obviously a bit of finishing and stuff like that, and some pinholes and whatnot. But I'm going to have to weld that whole edge anyway, so I'll get tidy that up when we get there. Had another little go of swaging on the swager. Probably a little small for my school level, but okay for where it's going to be going in the um, in the car. So with a bit of paint and sanding and stuff, that'll that'll be fine for where it's got to go. Fine enough. Sounds rough. Sounds rough, but fine enough. It's only for me. If someone was paying me to do this, I'd probably spend a bit, you know. Probably not, really. I'd probably just put spray putty all over it and high build primer and stuff and sand the crap out of it. Probably not, really. Nobody pays me to do this stuff, I just do it for fun. Now i just got to weld, weld those up. I might flush them down a little bit more first, but then weld, weld up those relief cuts. And then that's the other side, to, however that works. Hopefully I've folded it the wrong way, the right way. So here we have it, side two. So they're gonna get a join a piece that can fit in there somehow. Might um might need to bolt it all on there first first with a T and then I can measure up the piece that'll tie them together and then that'll make my removable shock tower cover only necessary because I put big ugly shock towers in there now I have to make a big ugly cover to cover them hey guys just want to show you this real quick just um, welded up my cover TIG welded it all um, what I like about the TIG welding is like your confusion weld if you get a nice join, nice tight join, you can sort of fusion weld it and uh, eliminate the need for too much filler rod. But there's a few bits where I kind of got a bit wild on the old TIG and used a bit of filler rod to um, sort of fill it up so they've built up a little bit. But still get good, good penetration from the inside, so I'll do a little bit of a clean up on this and I'll check back in in a minute. So there we have it. All cleaned up. Still a few little little pits and whatnot in there, but nothing a bit of high build uh, epoxy primer won't take care of. Not too bad on the inside. That's good enough for what it is. I think it actually came up all right. Not not too ugly, but it's ugly, but it's it's not too ugly. Drop it 
drilled a hole in the wrong place, so I had to weld it up. So, as you can see there, with the rib nut, drilled that one in the wrong spot. Added a little piece in here too. Don't know why I didn't do that last week. Here we have it. Okay, that's pretty much that side. Now I just have to replicate it, kind of, on the other side. Uh, but the other side I've got heaps more rust repairs to do before I can even get that far, so get on to it. Anywho, so I got this the other side, the other inner fender thing, engine bay wall side that I've got to try and figure out what to do with. Before I can even start trying to make a box thing for this, I probably should try and address some of this old acid eaten steel from the, where the battery tray used to sit. Um, pretty, pretty rugged. Just trying to decide whether to try and do a big one piece repair or whether I should cut it into patches and pick it apart. It might actually be way easier just to do a one piece repair, cut one piece folds and that in it, do the old across the knee curve, another little kink through here, make a new return for that front bit to go on to, and uh, then be done with it, it might be the way to go actually, less pissing around patching together and chasing, trying to weld to shit that doesn't want to be welded to. Let's do it. Okay, I'm making this piece here to basically replace this whole back section here. Oh, it's actually the front, sorry. Um, my little box pan folder isn't quite long enough, wide enough to fold these nice, as nice as I'd like, but it's uh, folded, so I'll be able to hammer them up a bit nicer when I put this works. Um, what I've got to probably going to do is cut this hump out, just hack it out, just so I can get this to lay flat in here, so I can then make sure these curves are starting to come into line. And a few years ago, I bought a set of slip rollers, and uh, in the space of about three years, used them about three times. So I sold them. But since I bought this 51, I probably could have used them dozens of times. But so. Without the benefit of a slip roller, this is how I've been getting the curves on here. I've measured out where my curves started and finished, and I've just been pushing it over over here. Doesn't give you a perfect curve, but it's, um, it's just not bad. Again, it seems to be more at the ends. It seems to kind of do little whoop whoop de whoop thing there, but that's probably where I'm going to have to do the most sort of hammering and stuff anyway so but in the main curve it actually produces a relatively nice curve just for a piece of old um I don't know what it is 40 45 mil tube and yeah so I'll cut those out and then I'm going to work out how I'm going to do this return whether I sorry you can't see whether I sit it about here trim down through here leaving an excess here that I could then fold up and make it one piece or whether I cut a piece and weld it down here I'd like to do it in one piece if possible but it's only the problem is it's starting to fold on that curve but if I follow how the factory did it we might be alright hey getting this um, closer and closer that lip there, it's all pretty roughed in at the moment obviously. I don't, I don't sort of spend too much time getting everything perfect from the very get go. I kind of like get the whole thing in, build it up in layers. So then you can kind of trim and, and uh, so I'm going to have to take a bit out of here. I'm going to cut down the side of this lip to keep the original lip as a kind of a guide as to where I'm going to go. So. So if I trim back up through here, 
and that'll slot back in there proper like and I can mark around it and uh, cut it out and weld a new piece in. I discovered when I hacked out that hump that, that brace that goes up the back there was a hump as well so I was going to have to um, put a slit in it and hammer it flush and now I'll have to, once I've pulled, cut this piece off I'll uh, clean up the stuff on the inside, weld that up, chuck some rust fix whatever stuff in there and then I'll uh, weld this bit in. Ready? Back again. So, cut out the, um, the ugliness and found more ugliness. So what I'm going to do, rather than just weld a new piece over the top of that, I'm going to get in here for the wire wheel, then I'll spray some rust converter and stuff in there just to kind of seal it up a bit so it lasts another 70 years, hopefully. And uh, while, while that's drying, I can be toiling around with the sort of final fit for this. And then I'll tack it in place, make sure it still fits in the car. Um, and then we'll weld it all up. Anywho, make it quite a bit of a mess as I do these things, and I always try to tell myself to to start working cleaner, but it just doesn't seem to happen. I just end up dragging tools out, and my bench is already covered in everything that I've used today. I'll put some stuff back, kind of. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see, this is all welded in, all flushed back. I TIG welded all of this, so um, it's a little bit high there still, but um, finished up quite nicely. I've just got to drill a couple of holes in here, so I'll match up the panel that, that rivets onto there, and I'll drill the holes through that to get them in the right place. Um, I'll leave that as it is for now. I won't bother finishing up or putting any etch primer on here yet. I've still got to do. I'm going to cut a piece out here and um, start making the, the cover and the clearancing and that for the old uh, shock tower cover clearancer thing that I made for the other side. Like for one of those, but for the other side. So that's that one from yesterday, all pretty much finished up. Probably a bit overkill with the fasteners, probably don't need that many, I've got two on the other side as well, but I don't know, I didn't really think too much about positioning them, I was just more putting them in where they had good material to go into, but in hindsight I probably should have centred that one up, it might have looked a bit nicer, but it's alright, it doesn't matter, it's only, it's going to be pretty much it's covered up anyway, but there you go, there you have it, I've got that all ready to now start making the um, tower box thing. Oh, I missed a hole. I went around and welded up the holes. Oh, got some daylight shine through there, so that's right, we'll get back into that. Um, I had to locate where I needed to drill holes to put this bit on that I worked on earlier. I haven't got any of those fancy Clico, Clicco Klepto thing, so a couple of roof nuts and some little bolts to hold that in there just now, and an old heater bolt to locate that. Scrounging, scrounging for the little nuts and bolts and stuff. I really need to go and buy a stock or something. But. And found a little problem down here. This might be a bit different when it's all bolted up properly, but I might need to trim back this this bracket here. And the other thing I'm gonna have to check now is at full laid out whether any of this suspension stuff and tires is gonna hit these. Didn't think of that until now. I need to trim back that little lip that I folded in there too. I did actually make it oversized so I could trim it back, but I forgot to trim it back. So uh, just jacked up the front end. This is approximately as far as it can go with I'm not sure if you can see in there that um 
top a um just touching that support bracket i don't technically need that bracket because that was for the battery and it's not going back in there i've kind of welded it all in there now but I might be able to cut a relief in it i definitely need to trim back down there by the pivot Hmm. More problems. Simple little problems, but we'll get there. Anyway, so we're at, at the stage where I can finally start making this box now. I'll sort of cut out that little humpy bit that was down in here. Um, done all that rust repair stuff in here. Plugged up some of the holes. Just noticed I missed one. And I've got a few pinholes that I didn't see before and some of the other bits. But that's all right we'll get back into that um and now so i suppose we'll start making the, the box up for this side to cover up the shock towers okay so i'm on my second second side shock tower cover or upper thing um this has all been all been TIG welded. I think this is 1.2 mil, or one mil, or a mix of two, just scrapped from under the bench. Um, what I wanted to show, to show you is, you know, like when you're trying to get a, a really nice kind of file finish, as they say. Um, I, I, this is how I do it anyway. I get my my slapper, which is actually just a a big engineering file that I bought years ago and and heated it up and bent a hand into it, but it's still a good file. Actually, it's the sharpest file I've had, um, as the rest of my files are all pretty stuck. Hint, 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 hint. Okay, so what I'm sort of getting at is here, is where I kind of cut all these little reliefs and that to get these curves and radiuses on the side here, is I sort of run down the file across the top, And you can see just by the way it hits in uh, you know where it takes material off because that's where all my high spots are so you can either keep filing in this case I could probably do that I've got uh, you know, fairly thick material to work with um, but you could also once you sort of see them just kind of give them a little love tap with, a, with your whacking stick Then you can sort of hit the fire lightly again, and then you can sort of see if it you get that kind of more even. I don't know if you can see it in the, on the camera, but that even marking from the file that means you're kind of flushing it out. Well, that's what I think it means anyway. Another little life tip, um, cleaning off any surface rust and shit like that before you do your swaging because it's heaps easier um, than trying to do it after with a flapper wheel and, and shit like that. Don't look too closely at the swaging either or this piece in general. But um, yeah, so just about done with this. I'll want to clean it all up. I might even clean up the inside a little bit. Maybe not. Oh, no, I should do I did the other side. And I'll squirt some H primer on it and I'll show you when it's all done. So you can see, I don't know if you can see it but there, there's two kind of high spots right right there and there which is like a little kink from where I cut reliefs and then welded and it kind of leaves a little thing so this side is actually getting a little bit thin because I um, 
I just got it completely wrong and I had to cut it up and do stuff again. So I've already been in and ground up this one. spot or exceptionally high spot sort of thing you can actually get in there and smack it from the other side using a maybe something hard sometimes like metal on metal will stretch the steel sometimes a block of wood is just as good as a bit of metal if you're just trying to get a gentle sort of nugget back out a nice sort of metal finish I don't always oh, I hardly ever try and get a file finish on um, on stuff it's only really if I'm doing it on the bench and stuff you can kind of do that when you're working on doing rust repairs and cutting patches out of cars and you can't get back in behind it it gets a little bit trickier not entirely impossible it's not impossible because I've seen people do it and they just got more patience than the in Chat by the name of Andrew Clatworthy, street neat. He, he's the man, he's the master at, at file finish stuff and, and sheet metal work. Body work, whatever you want to call it. Oh, a little dig dad. <laughs> Get in there with the power file and just knock down some of that just so it's not so lumpy looking it doesn't really matter you're never going to see this anyway unless you take the cover off but i'll clean it all up and make it look a little bit prettier So just gonna check that everything lines up and There we have it. This whole mission seemed to just take so long. And both sides were slightly different to each other. For some reason the contours of the inner guards are slightly different and somehow I've made two quite different looking things, but it's all right. Uh, by the time we get the heat ducting and all the other crap that goes in there, you won't even see them. I'll just paint everything really black so you can't see it maybe still got enough breathing room between the manifolds and, and that not too tight I don't think maybe I don't think there's anything else that 
used to go on there. We had heater hoses and stuff like that, but I think that's about it. Maybe some wiring or something. Possibly coil coils. I don't know where I'm gonna put those, but Hey, thanks for making it to the end of another one of my uh, videos. This is pr probably quite a boring one, but there's some little glimmers of light in there, you know, maybe. Um, did a bit of TIG welding, which is quite cool. Um, haven't been doing that very long. I only bought a little cheap import TIG welder uh, last year and haven't had that much success doing sheet metal with it to be honest but I've kind of learned a bit more about it and sort of dialed it in just just a bit now anyway um, so yeah got the as if you watched it you can see I made those little boxes for the covering up the shocks and stuff so they're not they're, they're okay um, so we might just keep the bonnet down at car shows anyway and if you want to see some more and hopefully have some more interesting stuff coming up in the future obviously there's still a lot to go on this car uh, make sure you subscribe uh, chuck some comments down below in the comment box that I made well, I didn't really make it it's just part of YouTube um, and share to your friends and any any uh, got what I was gonna say anyway till next time uh, next video I don't know what I'm going to be doing next. I'm kind of going to leave this where it's at, this part. Um, got a bit of stuff in the boot I've got to take care of. Some swaging and some stuff. And I don't really know, actually. I'm so fixated on this, I don't really know what I'm going to do next. Anyway, till next time. Peace. How do I get so dirty? It's covered in shit.